will have a little change in our agenda. Uh, somehow uh, we didn't get our minutes out, and uh, we'll, we'll postpone those till next meeting, approval of those minutes till next meeting, if that's all right. Uh, also on the uh, committee reports, we need to move that commercial zoning out of that down to ordinance and resolution, which it's already there. We double double that up, and I'll, I've got about five more items to add to my mayor's comments. But I'll wait till that get there when I get there. So, uh, all right, uh, we have only one thing on park reports, unless somebody wants to ask a question, and. Uh, Wade, I think you got a wastewater permitting update. Yeah, I'll be, I'll, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll be brief. Uh, we've been going through the regulatory issues with Turkey Creek. I think I've given you guys an update since you've been uh, in session here for this year. But uh, we've been given the go-ahead from the ADEQ to initiate third-party rulemaking with the Arkansas Pollution Control and Ecology, Ecology Commission. This has taken us about two and a half years to get to this point. Uh, so this is actually a big step forward in our attempts to get our, our, our permit under control down at the wastewater plant. Um, we've still got a long ways to go. Uh, next step is we send that, we actually have to send a petition first to the governor's office so that he can approve it before it goes to the commission. But we should be this year moving forward with the actual rulemaking and we'll be holding some public hearings and we we'll have to go to a couple of joint congressional hearings and other off, but it's, this is a very positive step forward uh, towards what we've been trying to, to accomplish down there to avoid the major capital outlay that we would have been looking at with these mineral limits. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner for Has anybody got any questions for any of the department? They're not all here tonight. Okay. Okay, we'll move down to the committees. Do not have anything, Mr. and Ms. Magnus is not here tonight, but uh, this legislative audit, I'll go ahead and bring it up if you don't mind. Uh, all we need is an up and down vote for the 2000 legislative audit acceptance. And uh, you all had a chance to look at those back several months of looking, probably. But, uh, Anybody got any discussion on that? Okay, there being no discussion, I'll entertain a motion to accept the audit. Okay. I, have, I have a motion and a second to accept the audit. Any further discussion? That being uh, all of the favor by. Aye. Aye. All of the both saying. Motion carried. Okay. Does anybody, Bill or Mary Jean, you got anything you want to bring up? No, sir. <coughs> we'll move down to the easement request from Source Gas, and Ryan's not here also. So, uh, Wade? Uh, Source Gas is putting an easement out on the north side of town. We'd already granted them uh, an easement on the east side of our bunker tank property. They got out there, started working. Um, what their plan was was to go along our south property but not on our property they have the easement south of our parking line there well the guys in the field misunderstood and they actually started on on the city's property got about 500 foot of line in we had some guys going out to check on things at the tank saw it and at that point everybody started talking and realized there was a problem. <coughs> instead of making them dig up 500 feet of gas line i just told them to go ahead and send me a, an easement document for that that little section of line that they've already put in said I just bring it to the council see if we can get it approved because there's it's not going to hurt us our use of the property so there's really no sense in making them go back and dig out that 500 foot. It makes sense. So. I think the issue yeah. for the council would be to at some point approve the easement. Do we wait until we get it and then bring it to council? It should. It was in the package. The easement document was in the package. Then, 
Uh, motion second. Is that motion right way? So for the easement. 500, is it 500 feet? Mm -hmm. They installed about 500 foot. You can say more or less? Yeah. More okay. or less 500 foot. Okay. Okay. okay, you can change that motion. You yes. say that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, bye. Aye. Aye. All those opposed, say. Motion carried. <coughs> okay, we moved down in uh, Mrs. Taylor's resource and policy. Uh, there's something I may add to that. You know, we had discussion in committee about changing, flip-flopping our regular and committee meetings. I don't know if you want to bring that up tonight. It's not, a, I didn't put it on the on the thing, but it, Mitch said if you want to bring it up, he called me and said it's up to y'all. But uh, that part I can add to that if you want to talk about it tonight or you want to leave it until we meet again. Whatever Jordan wants to do. Right, it's six long way. I have to put it in the It was going to be for July. July, yeah. Okay. Um, for July, you better do, do it tonight. Yeah. What we were going to do, we want to go and talk about it now? Okay, Is yes. that okay? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. What we were going to do, and here's the schedule we were going to have a regular council meeting tonight. We were going to have a regular committee meeting on June the 23rd. Then we were going to have another committee meeting on July the 9th. That's where the flop starts. Then our council meeting will be July the 23rd at 6 o'clock. So we'll have two committee meetings back, basically back to back. And that way it will help with the finance, financial department to get the reports to Mitch so we all have time to look at them before the next month. Does anybody have any questions or anything on this? The only thing I may say about that is that the only problem you may have is going in November and December. Other than that, it'll be fine. Why in November? Well, you got you got Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving calls in there, and you got Christmas calls on those record, pretty close to those regular meetings. Other than that, but we can reschedule meetings. We can move. Yeah, we can reschedule meetings. No problem. I think the only question I would have: Would there be a need to have a June committee meeting if in July we can? We're going to start out with community. We we'll just forego that one. We don't necessarily have to have one unless something comes up exactly. between now and then that we have to address in committee. I, I would think that we would forego <coughs> it in July unless something comes up. That's not a bad idea. That would work. So, no committee meeting this month? No committee we meeting did, on we need July. need to vote on that? Yeah, right. I think you all need to vote. Yes. Just the up or down vote is a matter of getting it in minutes for housekeeping purposes. So basically we want to have a committee meeting on June the 23rd at 6 o'clock, forego the committee meeting on July the 9th, not have no, it at all. I thought you were going to the other one. the one in June and just have the one in July. Oh, okay. No I'm, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. That's what I mean. This, this yeah. month. That's right. Which yeah. actually yeah. yeah. no, works out for you all going sorry. to uh, Little Rock. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to address this other issue. That's right. We'll take care of two things. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So have the one on June 23rd and then skip and then have the council meeting on July. Oh, you, you just said you did it again. <laughs> you did exactly. <laughs> skip for the one on June 23rd. <laughs> I got it. And then July 9th for our first committee meeting. And then cancel the 23rd. Cancel the 23rd. Have the July the 9th. Absolutely. Have the council five, five, meeting on July the 23rd. Perfect. Would back back back. you make that into a motion? Certainly. A move. I've used all my words. Okay. I'm we done. have a motion and a second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. I got it. Okay. <laughs> okay, any further discussion on the issue? So now I don't know who made the motions in the second. Oh, I made the motion. It's all the second. Okay. Okay. Zena, what you got in that cup? I promise it's coffee. <laughs> I promise. Joel brought it to me. It's not enough coffee. Not enough coffee, exactly. Any further discussion yeah. on this issue? Yeah. Okay, we have a straight. Okay, all in favor, bye. 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 All those opposed, same. Motion carried. Yeah, it'll be a change of meeting time. No time, but dates. <coughs> okay. And See, then we will not have to, we will not have a meeting this month, so we'll waylay the committee meeting this month, so we'll we'll have to change that. Because everybody's going to uh, this one. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay, now we are getting in uh, to an ordinance. 
on uh, commercial zoning, zoning a property from C2 to C3, and it came through the from the uh, planning commission. And Brian, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to you on this one. And I I brought this up at the committee meeting that we would be facing this, and I want to make sure everybody had time to look at it. When we brought, first brought up it at when it was brought to us this past month at the Planning Commission, one of the questions I even asked was, do we have more time to look at it? And because of time frame, we really didn't have to. And the fact that there was a already a C3 on both sides of the existing property that we're looking at with C2 in the middle, uh, we moved, and it was a split vote, three to two, uh, to move forward with rezoning it to a C3, which brings us to the City Council. Um, hopefully many of you had a chance to look at the property and see what's coming up as well or talk to anybody or even receive emails but uh, I, I'll answer any questions best I can or wait or anybody else but I think most of you guys I'll, I'll open it up to the council first for questions please. are they going to turn that building down or are they going to reuse that building they're going to reuse that building is my understanding okay. now I've talked to several people out of there Maybe there's some legal comment that since this is the first rezone that most of you have dealt with here, the law behind rezoning <coughs> is that uh, the owner of property that fronts on a state highway, and that is Pine Street to us here in Harrison, but it's also designated as Highway <coughs> The owner has the expectancy in a general commercial zone to have his property, which is on a highway, re, you know, rezoned if he requests it, to the highway commercial. Uh, there is an issue tonight that is, I should point out to you that we only have six of you here tonight. This is an ordinance. It will require three readings. And of course, uh, uh, to get it read the first time will only require the vote of a simple majority, which would be five of you. To put it on its second and third reading tonight will require all six of you. Not that I'm suggesting how you vote or anything, but I do want you to know those things. Uh, and I think the have to have two thirds majority to spend the rules. We'll have to have all six to go on the second and third reading, and I do understand that at least the property owner, the seller of the property, to the buyers, which I believe the buyers are here tonight, uh, do have a date set, or they're expecting attention to this in anticipation that they <coughs> have a rezone in time to make that closing. Now, other than that. I think unless you have questions of me, that's the legal position. <coughs> hey, any other council have anything to bring up uh, before I open it up to, <coughs> to decisions? Okay, does anybody here to speak for it first? Does anybody here to speak with the company or with... Okay, Mr. Patrick, I'll recognize you. Thank you, sir. I'm Ron Patrick with Remax Real Estate, and I represent the owners of this property, which is Southland Capital Realty Group, based out of Mobile, Alabama, in long distance <coughs> land. Uh, Capital Realty Group owns commercial real estate and rents it. They have rented this property to Terminix Corporation. Uh, Capital Realty Group does not wish to open a, a business. Uh, they have a sale pending, and the new owners, which are local individuals, wish to open up a business. Uh, the local buyers wish to open up an auto repair shop. Uh, these two young men, of which one of them is here tonight, have worked for others their entire professional careers, and their dream is to own their own business and be their own boss, like, like many people. This building suits their needs. It is. It, it doesn't look like it at, at first, but there are there are a couple of offices in the front, but the back half of the building is already shot. That is where Terminex housed their trucks, their chemicals, 
etc. The, the back cabin is already shop, big shop door back there. Um, there is a chain link fence around the back of the property. There is a double gate in the back which they can bring cars in you know, from the back alley. Um, this building has been vacant for a couple of years. It's starting to show its wear and tear and become a little unsightly. These gentlemen hope to fix it up, make it a, a nice looking building and make it an asset to the area. Uh, all, all, most of the, all the work will be done inside the building. And actually, there will be some vehicles stored outside the building, inside this chain link fenced area, <coughs> but uh, they will all be behind the building. The, the building is located such that it's only a few feet from the curb, the front of the building. Basically enough to park about one car, which they would assume would be customer vehicles. So all of the work in progress would be behind the building and inside the chain link fence. Um, Ms. Hickman spoke very nicely before in our planning commission meeting about her desire to keep <coughs> Highway 7 very scenic, which we all agree with that. Unfortunately, Highway 7 runs right through the middle of downtown Harrison, and as soon as it enters the city, enters the city limits, it becomes a commercial district. Uh, one of the first buildings, with the first businesses, of course, there's a school bus garage, there's the Entergy Construction Office, which houses big trucks and equipment. There's a couple of used car lots, one of them that does mechanical work also. And even the KCWD building used to be industrial, the Coca-Cola bottling plant. I went to high school across the street from that thing in my day. Um, Ms. Hickman also expressed fears of the, the unsightliness, perhaps damaging her business from wreck cars or junk cars being parked out front. In this particular building, there's no room for that. Uh, and the owners would not want that anyway to make their business unsightly. Uh, the only parking in front would be for customers. All the buildings would be, or all the automobiles would be placed behind the building in the chain link fenced area. And the planning commission has recommended that with approval they would require a privacy fence between the commercial and residential area, which I think the zoning does require. Uh, by definition, this property fits C3 commercial, which is highway commercial. Uh, in closing, you know, the Southland Capital Group is asking this, this city council to assign their property the same zoning that the city has already approved in the past for their neighborhood, for their neighboring properties. The, there are one of the business owners is here tonight. Should the council have any further questions, they would like to ask him, and I would be open for any questions that you might have for me. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, how many people we have here? Yes. And we have a petition. Okay. Could I have just one of you speak, please? Can Mrs. Hawk hand out the petition to yes. the council members? I'm Mary Hickman. I'm a Kirby Manor. Um, that was built in 1895. And we're at 611 South Pine Street, directly across from uh, the Terminex building. Uh, currently, our street is on C2. And it is true that the KCWD building that was the Coca-Cola bottling company back at the end of World War II is when it was built, was zone C3. However, since then, it has become an office building, not a bottling plant. And then also, the other building that's zone C3 is a defunct gas station, which is a detail shop. So, we're obviously moving away from C3, not toward it. We're more of a C2. And if you look on your city website, where you go by your zoning guides, the purpose of a C2 zoning is to be the buffer in between downtown commercial and residential. So when you take more and more of that away and erode it more and more, you're just losing your buffer and you're just making us become more commercial than we're intended to be or anybody in the neighborhood is moving toward. Uh, we went door to door to everybody in our neighborhood, 26 people signed the petition, no one um, 
no one was really for it at all. Everybody basically signed it. Um, we do feel like that um, we want to protect the integrity of our street. Um, on the one on the one hand, what we have going on in Harrison right now is we're on this big push. The mayor is to clean up Harrison and make it all look better. We just paid for new signs to point out our historic districts in Harrison for tourism reasons. And now on the other hand, we're trying to negate that by taking away part of our beauty. And it has absolutely nothing against these nice gentlemen, not Ron, not the gentleman wanting to open a business. I'm a small business owner. I'm all for small business. But there's other places in the city that they could go. We don't have to change that zoning to accommodate this business. There's other places to go. And I'd also like to point out, and this again has nothing against these gentlemen, but the Southland Realty Group, if you look at their website, they are a capital investment group. They do investments for their investors. And if you look on there, they have several rezoning projects going in several different cities and states where if the real estate doesn't work out for plan A they had it for, they go to the zoning commission and try to get it rezoned to do plan B. And why do they care? They don't care. They don't live in Harrison, Arkansas. And, and I know Ron and these gentlemen care about Harrison. That's not my point. My point is the actual owner, you know, they don't care. They're just trying to sell real estate and have dividends for their stockholders. Um, let's see. Um, as I said, everybody on our street, um, we all have um, money invested in our property right now. We have sweat equity. We have pride. We already have that all invested. We can't move our property. These gentlemen have not invested any of their money yet. They don't have anything invested right now, and we already do. And in the committee meeting, I know a lot of the committee, meeting, committee members felt like, well, if it's already zoned C3 on each side, how can we say we can't say no? Well, yes, you can say no. That's why we're here. And we're really asking you to say no, because we want to preserve the integrity of our street. Even if what these gentlemen do is fine, then you make that whole block C3, and that just makes it very uh, conducive to someone coming in after they sell, hopefully, you know, not for a long time, you know, but somebody else could come in and take down the whole block and put up God only knows what. And then you're just eroding more and more and more. It's just a constant erosion. So that's how I feel about it. And I think I have some better points, but I'm nervous. Right. <laughs> that's all right. And, and Ms. Ella, I'll, I'll be the first, I guess, to ask you a question. Um, being on the Planning Commission, of course, I'm, I'm the one who made the motion to go ahead and accept. I did it because of this. I, the, the problem that I run into is that either side of those, those other two businesses that are C3 could have easily been bought by the gentleman had those businesses been for sale, and there's really nothing to be said for them to change those businesses if they were to buy that. They just happen to be buying the one in the middle, uh, so it gives precedent to that area. And again, I think emotionally we were all with you. I think that's what split the vote. I think emotionally we, 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 we feel the same way about 7th and South. We drive that. I drive that every day. That's my drive to work every single day. Um, but the issue is, is that how I, I realize that we have the right to say no, but is it justifiable to say no when they could easily buy any of the businesses that are already C3 and, and it's right across from your business to change it? And then also the fact that we did our best when we made that motion to surround it with a fence on all sides so that it would be, uh, most of the cars would be hidden from view, at least from the residential side and mainly from the front as well. So, I mean, that just that was my, my side of it. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'd love to hear, and I think that would help the council maybe have a better understanding of your argument to that. Well, that's like saying, well, you can't date Betty Lou. Well, why can't I? I could date Susie or Bobby, you know? It's not the same thing. Yeah, they could buy those other two buildings, but they're not for sale. So why do we have to? I just don't agree with that argument. I mean, it is what it is. We don't have to change the zoning. It's not zoned that currently. The other two are, and they're not for sale. The people don't want to sell them. And if they did want to sell them, then there would be nothing that we can do. But we can do something about this. And there's 26 people that live and work on that street that signed a petition saying, we don't want it. And I think that should count for something. I mean, that's our neighborhood. <coughs> we pay taxes. We're property owners. And if you think there's anything um, rewarding about 
refurbishing a Victorian house that was built 112 years ago. You don't get any tax credits. You don't get anything. You know, you do it for the love of your community and the love of, you know, the historic value. That's all we have. So if they're not with us, you're against us. Wow. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just teasing about that. But I do feel strongly about it. And everybody on the street does. Yeah. And I think our opinion should count for something. And, and, and it does. And that's the reason for a public hearing. And that's the reason to allow for the opportunity for you to speak to the council and to the city planning commission. Um, um, and, I, and I realize, but I guess all your arguments of, of, for me, just beforehand, saying that you didn't want these businesses across the street, and, and that's why we say that, well, if they would have bought this one, there'd be nothing to say. And, and I think that, as far as the Planning Commission, and what happens here in the next little bit, who knows, but I, as far as the Planning Commission, I think we did our best to try to protect with a fence, with a privacy fence, and so on, to try to protect the, the community around it, the residents around it, and so forth. But uh, I definitely understand your concerns, but I really do. I know you do, and I appreciate it, and thank you for letting me talk. That hasn't been brought up yet. It may be more of a side issue. I think that's why the, the picture was brought forth. It's more, um, you have some historic homes across from the right there, and they don't want it to degrade their businesses and so forth, but it's not the look of, of outside of cars, which is why they put it, we, we put it to the privacy fence. Nobody from the neighborhood was here that day. Uh, and I believe here tonight that they're representing still the neighborhood by, by the signatures, so we don't really know what the neighbor's concerns would be, and we only know the business owner's concerns. Who's in the building that's directly to the south? It used to be a chiropractic clinic, but is it still open as one, or is it anybody else? Know. It still is Dr. Brown. No. <clears throat> is he on his petition? No, he's not. Can you tell me why not? He, um, I talked with him. He was concerned about it, but he wanted to go online and read the zoning laws. So I did not get back with him. Just ran out of time. Okay. Anybody else would like to speak in the audience? Can we make one short statement? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. yeah. One significant issue that I found interesting is I'm a, uh, I've been a school teacher for roughly 30 years. And the one thing that was interesting to me that was brought up regarding the C3 zoning is it is stating in uh, Chapter 7, 32 commercial, Section 203 C3 neighborhood commercial, it speaks of indoor um, <coughs> businesses and it specifies it more for showing that it's residential and commercial, that the C3 is more for indoor type businesses, not outdoor type businesses. And then another area that was really concerning to me, as I said as a school teacher, is that it said that any use permitted in the C2 district, except convalescent or nursing homes, assisted living facilities, or daycare centers. So it's saying that in a C3, these are um, any use of of these are not permitted in the C3. And the school itself is one-tenth of a mile away from this uh, mechanic shop, and the uh, rec area is also. So that just raised a concern regarding the water. Well, an automotive garage is specifically listed under C3 as a suggested or permitted use. Okay. And then it also says that it's not including the following, <coughs> any outdoor service operations. So everything would have to be indoor. Is that possible for a mechanic shop to make everything indoor? And then the safe, the sale, rental display, or storage of vehicles trailers, tractors, machinery, or any other similar equipment is not including the following. Those are the following uh, laws that cannot be applied to the C C3. To C3? To C3. It says gas, gasoline service stations, lubricating and oil change services, convenient markets, service centers, or functions shall not include the following. 
any outdoor service operations, the sales, rental display, or storage of vehicles, trailers, tractors, machinery, or any other similar equipment, commercial parking of vehicles, major servicing of motor or body repair, such as, but not limited to, body or fender work, motor overhaul, motor transmissions repair, auto glass, tire recapping, muffler, it goes on and on and on. And then finally at the end, which just almost seems impossible uh, for a mechanic shop, it says other than those awaiting immediate repair. So. But I think we've got a little differential on a C3 and C2 here. Right? Well, if, if, I, if I was hearing what you're saying there, you're, you're trying to read on a C3, well, all those things you're saying there cannot be in a C3. That's what you're telling me. Tell me that. I understand that it's a C2 commercial yes. residential area. I'm saying even in a C3, it cannot have this regulations. So why don't we just keep it as a C2? Even in a C3, it can't be. It's almost impossible for them to have that mechanic shop in there without it being indoor or immediately repairs. Or I don't have a code book in front of me. I'm sorry, um, but if I look at C3, it can do almost anything in C3. I might be totally wrong. Am I wrong, way Or uh, uh, we don't there's have. This, there's a lengthy listing. I'm actually, I'm looking at the code, and I'm not. That's does not appear to be our code. There's a lot of automobile dealerships that are in C3 already, yeah. gas stations yeah. and service stations. And We've got one that does block, half block south. Yeah, they, they, they do automatic automotive repair in that old gas station. Well, I'm going to, you know, if I said anything about C3, it pretty well, it pretty well covers everything. A C2 is more office, flat type of business. C3 is is probably pretty well unrestricted. Well, that's not comforting. <laughs> well, no, I'm just telling you more or less what it, what it is. This, this position of the question has to be this way, is that it's an automotive garage facility is specifically one of the name permitted uses in a C3. I just don't know. I guess you can probably find something that's just like it, but I don't know if that's what the law is. This is from a zoning regulation of the state of Arkansas, not the city of Harris, what she's doing. Well, uh, that would mean that's not our adopted code, I guess. This is an I can tell you that an automotive garage is specifically designed in a C3 highway commercial zone. Thank you. Okay, hey, in that, um, nobody has any other questions or comments? Yes, sir. My name is uh, Timothy Sprinkles. I'm wanting to buy the business to start my own shop. Uh, I've been doing automotive repair almost 20 years. I've been to school for it. My plan is I do want the privacy fence because I don't want my property looking like junk. I don't. I want the privacy fence. I want the cars and everything around back because, to be honest, you know, I've been in it 20 years. I would not take a car to a shop that looks like junk. I mean, I wouldn't. You know, I got a forty thousand dollar car. I don't want to take it to a place that looks like junk. I really don't. And you know, I want to be a part of the community. I want to strive in the community, and this is my way to get there. And I do live three blocks away from there. I'm by there every day. I live on uh, West Newton. You know. And if I plan on obeying all the EPA regulations and stuff, I won't be working on cars outside because I don't want to work in the weather. That's why I want a building or to work inside. And if anybody's got any questions, I'm more than willing to answer them. How many vehicles at one time, Tim, can you put in? 
the way the building is set up, we put about four four vehicles inside to work on. To work on, yes, sir. And I plan on, you know, me, I want to work on the cars, get them in and out. Because the longer they sit there, the more money it costs me. How many mechanics are you planning on having at this time? Uh, right now, it's just going to be me and my brother. And then we got this, we're going to have a secretary, a bookkeeper, to do our little books. And then once we get to going good, where we know we can afford, we plan on doing, hiring more more people to come in and work. There was a comment made about the, is the alley behind that building open? Uh, yes. Some of the alleys aren't in town. Yes, that is a complete through alley and there is a double gate in the back and a double gate up front. Where if you drive right up alongside the building, there's a concrete driveway that goes into the back. But as we plan, as soon as a customer drops a car off, take it around back, get it inside the bullpen, where, because I don't want nothing to be sitting outside, where it get broken into, stolen, or anything, and I don't want a bunch of cars parked out front, because then I can't get no other bike customers in there. Well, I failed to notice the alley, and that's why I yeah. yeah, it is a full through alley. Because you can come in off the road, Newman Street, you go right behind the car factory, go right behind it. You can go all the way over to the uh, radio station, or you can go into the parking lot at the radio station either way. What are your planned hours from that uh, Our planned hours is 8 to 5. Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. I walk that area every day. Uh, and I have to, I mean, I'm mixed both ways because the sad thing is, is that building's set empty now for uh, years, but I live in South Jersey, so I mean, <laughs> I live in that neighborhood, um, and I hate to see it, because it, it's actually, to me, it would actually be worse for the building to set there empty to let it, to let it degrade and collapse and fall down. But at the same time, I've had lots of my folks say it's a catch point there, I was very honest. And we do plan on, there's a lot of shrubs and stuff growing right up against the building, mm -hmm. making it looks like the building's overgrown. And that's one of our first issues is to go in and trim that up mm -hmm. and get it all cleaned up where it's got a good curb mm -hmm. appeal, you know, for the community. I know a mechanic shop can be quite noisy. That's why I was asking what your hours going to be. Mm -hmm. So after you know, most people get home, or if the one of the places or something has a guest, it's not going to be noise at night. You know, no. wrenches and the air compressors going off and everything. So. Yes. Okay. Hey, any further question, uh, Mr. Sprinkle? Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further comments? Okay, uh, since this came out of the uh, planning commission, I'll entertain a motion to rezone the C3. Place it on its first reading. To place on its first reading. I'll entertain that one. Title only. Uh, title only, yeah. <laughs> I'll make the motion right here. Second. I have a motion and a second to place it on first reading by title only. Any further discussion? I will ask the uh, roll call, please. Brian Herring. Yes. Mary Jean Krieger. It's hard to vote yes, but I will vote yes. Mitch Magnus Mary. Johnny Savage? No. Brian Oswald yeah. absent. Bill Boswell? Yes. Joel Williams? 
Section 14.16, zoning map of the Harrison Municipal Code to rezone certain lands from zone C2 to zone C3. Okay, at this time, I'll have to entertain a motion since they do need to buy or to purchase this building in a short period of time. <clears throat> in business. I'll have to entertain a motion to suspend the rules at this time and place it on its second and third readings. All right. By title. We have the amount. Or I guess this panel rules. Uh, that's correct. We need a motion, motion to suspend the rules. Okay. I have a motion. I need a motion to suspend the rules. I will make that motion to yeah. suspend the okay. rules. Okay. I'll second. I have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Any discussion on this issue? Remember what Van said on this? Uh, but I'll, we'll call the roll, please. Mary Jean Krieger? Yes. Rich Magnus absent. Johnny Savage? No. <coughs> Ryan Oswald absent. Bill Oswell? No. Joe Williams? Yes. Dina Taylor? Yes. Brian Herring? Yes. Four. Okay, the motion did not carry. Because we have to have six to suspend the rules. Okay. It will be on the agenda. It will be on the agenda. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. When is that next meeting? July. Now. Uh, can, we, can we discuss this? Yes, we can. Uh, yes, we can. Do we, and the reason to say it, <coughs> my primary reason for voting no is not necessarily against the ordinance. But I think it needs to be an eight-person council that votes on this. It doesn't need to be six of the eight to make that decision. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I, I can, I can, since you said that, I can call a special meeting. Special call meeting. For or three second. council people can call a special call meeting. Uh, would you all be in favor of doing such a thing? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. I think it needs to be the full council. Okay. Okay, we've got Mr. Magnus who will be out of town, I think. Ten days. Ten days. So it's out, next week is out of the question. We're back to the 23rd. Yep, we're back to the 23rd. But we cannot be at 22nd or 23rd because there will be several members missing the rest of that week. This week. So my suggestion would be on the 22nd. Monday the 23rd. I will get You will get I mean, I, I, I got a pretty search. What about the 23rd? <laughs> That's fine, but may I ask a question? Yes, sir. Will the 23rd work of June? For me? We'll be here at any time the council meets. Because that's part of the reason. Yes, yes. You're right. That I mean, I have to. But we realize we've got a sale contingent. We, we haven't said yes or nay, but our closing date is prior to that, but we will extend it. Okay, um, I actually would. I know I can call the meeting, but if you all are in agreements, uh, we'll just make that be the 23rd at 6, at 6 p.m. Is there anyone can do it over here? Bring it up. What would you like to do? Five. Four. Mm -hmm. Six. I don't know why not. It's my last week at FedEx anyway. So what really? Yeah. Okay. I'm retired. Okay, we have, we have, now, Mitch and Ryan, I don't know. I can't speak to this. Mitch, Mitch, might have, Mitch, Mitch might have an issue at 4 o'clock, though. I can text Ryan and ask him. Well, we can do five. I five. can do Monday at 4 o'clock. We're doing 4 o'clock. 6 o'clock actually would not be here, so I can do either one of them at 4 o'clock. I, I mean, I, I'm good with that. How about Tuesday at 5 o'clock? 
Tuesday at 5 o'clock. Friday, right. Tuesday at 5 o'clock. Right. 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 Okay. We will call a special meeting then. I'll just go ahead and announce it right now. We'll call a special meeting on the 23rd at 5 o'clock. And the only item on that agenda will be the rezone commercial zoning to C, from C2 to C3. And that will be the only item at this time on that agenda. Mayor, may I oh, ask? May I yes, ask? sir. Number one, I certainly appreciate the council considering our needs and, and moving a little forward on this quicker. At that council meeting, will will discussion be presented again just like yes, it was sir. tonight? Yes, sir. Okay, any, okay, anything else on that? Okay, we've already, we do not have to do a house of hope thing since that was a, that was on the, uh, Public hearing. Okay, some items that I did anybody have, excuse me, anybody got any new business to bring up this time? Okay, some items that under my comments, uh, we finished our inland spring cleanup, <coughs> and right at this time, they told me they picked up about 65,000 tons. Which was up a little bit from last year. I was hoping for a lot more. It didn't happen, and I appreciate everybody that worked on that and helped in that. Uh, there's some places we may have missed. There are probably some we're going to have to get to some little old back places we're going to have to go back to, but all in all, it turned out pretty good. Our, our uh, clean premises, another thing I wanted to mention. We have not written any citations at this time yet, but we are getting close. Probably next week, we'll probably have to start writing citations on that. But that is coming along pretty good, too. Uh, there is a few bumps in those roads also, but uh, our public works are working hard on that to get things cleaned up. Okay, I have a point to make. Now, Mr. Ed Chu resigned from the Parks Commission. And to, uh, for his replacement, I brought up Mrs. Kelsey Bardwell. And she's not here tonight, but Kelsey works for uh, Sprott Law Firm. She is a lawyer with them. Uh, she has kids within the uh, system, our Harrison Parks and Rec system. She's a very well uh, adapt person, very upfront person, very knowledgeable person. And I think she's a great choice for Parks and Rec. And I would like to entertain a motion for her appointment. She will fill the rest of Ed Shoe's term. So moved. I have a move. Do I have a second? Second. Have for a you, second. For you don't know her, that's Kelsey Hinkle. It's Chris Hinkle's yes. daughter. Chris was the energy manager here for many, many years. And Kelsey was a I don't think exceptional athlete. She went to school with my son. So yeah. Great. I watched, she grew up in my backyard. Yeah. Was yeah. it all the No, energy. It was energy. He and Chris worked for energy. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I have a motion and a second uh, in, in discussion. Okay, all in favor, bye. Aye. 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 All opposed, say. Thank you. Also, in front of you there, I have. Uh, giving you all two letters. And wait, this is, when I came, uh, got elected, I, one of the things I've worked on is uh, improvement, or overall improvement in our city, but this was a major, one of the major issues I thought we had within, within our city, infrastructure. And uh, Wade and I talked about this for a little while, and Wade composed a uh, letter, and we looked over it, and we kind of uh, went on, and uh, we actually had a meeting with District 9 Highway Department. I didn't want to send this down to the state without first talking to our local people, because, you know, if you go over somebody's head, things don't actually work right. So we, we worked this out with District 9 first. Pretty in-depth study about our Harrison Bypass, uh, what is needed, 
uh, in our future. Now, will this happen tomorrow? No, it will not. Uh, but if you don't get the ball rolling, probably never will happen. And I will not cover that cold letter. It's, it's totally revamping our current bypass. Also, another lead letter that I received today from back from the State Highway Department concerning this letter. It has, it's not saying they're going to do it, but it's not saying they're not going to do it either. They're, they are going to do a study. But also in that letter it says that uh, they're going to work on 43, excuse me, I don't have that memory. They're going to work on 43 and Rock Springs Road next year. But their physical year is different than our physical year. So they could run July next year till June of 2018. So they say within 2017. That intersection is a trouble lot of a problem on our highway, on our bypass. If they get to that first and get it done, it'd be a great asset. And, you know, it might help the flow and everything out. That's a, that's a Wendy's, right? Yes, that, that's at Wendy's and one of the cases. And that that project, we have, you know, didn't they not send us the scope of it, the overall layout of it? Yes, we, we have the, I guess you would call it the preliminary design, you know, how we plan for it. It's one of the intersections that we passed the first <coughs> resolution yeah. where we're doing the participation with the, the federal and state matching funds. Um, and it, but it, that is one of those projects that is, the federal money is out of the highway trust. So there's yeah, always the picture of that holding things up. But hopefully, if this letter right, we're going to get that finished next year, or at least get started. But as far as the total highway, they will send they're going to they're going to send the staff up here and develop the cost estimate and, and do all the survey and the work and all that stuff on it. So, but uh, this letter is fairly lengthy too, so I won't read all that. But I will give the press if they want a copy of this letter. I'll be glad to give you copies of both of these letters. Okay. Anybody got any questions? If you read through that, you'll understand why did an outstanding job on it. I'll let, let it go with that. So, something to look forward to, maybe. Is the Federal Highway Trust Fund still that? It is released temporarily. Some. Yeah, yeah. Partially released yes. temporarily. Yeah. Part, yeah. How did you say that? It's been a band-aid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, does, what does that mean? Well, that means they released it till July something, then they're going to reevaluate it after that to release, maybe release it again. As of yet, it does not mean our projects have been released. Yeah. So. But in those projects is also the light at Rush and May. In those holding projects, that light's in there. And that's called a little maintenance issue. So anyway, I'll get off of that. Okay. Uh, I want to bring you forward, you know, uh, Mr. James White approached me the other day. Is he here? Oh, yeah, he's here. Okay. He approached me on annexation and said, oh, God, said you're going to have to you're going to annex all this land. And I said, no, no, we're not. But anyway, we are going to annex three different things. One being a gentleman approached us a couple of months ago, and Van's working on all these things. One being a, a house that is attached to the city, he just wants to come in the city. So very simple. Another being on Windsor Drive, four lots that somehow are an island. And by law, we can't have islands. So, and those belong to an individual, and I've talked to that person, and I have a problem coming in the city. No problem whatsoever. Another being out by Shiloh Baptist Church, and Shiloh Baptist Church being one of the, of the entities in that area there, is not in the city, plus about 23 acres. And that also happens to be an island. That also happens to be an island. And 
again, we can't, I did not know this till I came on board, but uh, I've worked on it. I've talked to all those owners involved in that out there, and they're more than glad to in the city. But like I said, I want to put this up front because uh, I don't want anybody saying that we're going out trying to annex a bunch of land. We're not. Uh, uh, we're just doing what the law says. And Van is working those, and hopefully next month we'll get those to you, to you all. Silo is the one up at the college, right? Yes. Where it's on Camps Drive, in Camps Drive. Yeah, where, the, where the discussion's always been about the pavement ends and pavement starts. And yes. Morning. There will be some infrastructure things there. Not <laughs> much. Yeah. Not much, but there will be some when we take that on board, which which will be good. And uh, the people that own that are going to develop. So that'll be a plus also. I see somebody's done some work. Look, almost looks like they're bringing it. Entrance in off the highway. Kind of well, thing. yes, they are. Right, I mean, it's obvious. I mean, yeah, they've laid yeah. a culvert out there. They are. So. There's some. Uh, there's probably going to be some major buildings. Good. There. Hopefully, uh, I don't want to mention because I want to put dates and names and things. Somehow they just shh, fall off the board. That's so good I'm not going to do that anymore. So. All right. One more item. I'm sorry to hold you up. Sorry, but. Day before yesterday, the Northwest Economic Development uh, Director came in and said that uh, somehow FEMA, FEMA had found some money laying around someplace, like a million dollars. It was attached to the 2008 flood plan, flood that we had here. Uh, so Wade and I started talking on this, and also the director, and we have applied. For that money, it is a infrastructure kind of tied to the uh, kind of tied to the flood, the flood itself, or what, maybe if bridges or whatever that may be in the, something happened to them, or uh, you know. But uh, we applied for two bridges, right, Wade? That is, yeah. We'll send the info in tomorrow. What we are considering, it's, it, there's a million dollars available, now we have to do a 20% match. So that means in order to get the full million, we would have to pitch in 250000 So you're looking at about $1.25 million project or above in order to you know, get the full federal funding that's available. Uh, and what the way I understood it is they wanted is to be infrastructure that was impacted by those floods. It doesn't necessarily have to be you know, damage that's still existing, because hopefully anything that was damaged in 2008 is... Yeah, we fixed already. It's already yeah. fixed yeah. at this point. But, so what we, what we looked at is a couple of bridges that are aging, that need attention, that are going to be a cost to us in the future, maybe not not a too distant future either. Um, the Goblin Drive Bridge, we thought that was a good one. That is, you know, Dry Jordan is a FEMA special flood, ha flood hazard area, flood plain. So it, it was impacted back in 2008 by the, by the flood. And we're also looking at the Main Street Bridge by Pizza Hut, out there on the north side, that is now the city's. Both of those are aging bridges. Actually, the Goblin Drive Bridge was a it was a new to us bridge yeah. when it was put in. Put it that way. It was a, I guess a recycled bridge that we that was reused. Really? Yeah. Um, the total cost to do both of those bridges that we're looking at right now um, is about one point five million dollars. Those are reasonably conservative estimates, but it's you know, finding out yesterday haven't had this ready for tomorrow. Yeah. You don't get to do a whole lot of investigating. Um, but you know, we're looking at 1.5 million. Well, it, if we're awarded the project, we've got a, one million in federal money available. That leaves half a million for the city of Harrison to pitch in more to do these things. Right now, we have close to a half million dollars dedicated in the Red Book to, um, partly to Goblin Drive Bridge. They, they put in there just to do some maintenance and not replace it. 
um, and then also the Spear Drive Low Water Crossing. Now those two projects combined in the Red are approaching half a million dollars, about four, about 480 actually. So it's built but budget? Well, somewhat, somewhat, you might say. It's not really a budget as such, but it's building, it was building the Red Book right. infrastructure. It's not in actual budget. Okay. Yeah. But uh, that's just something that we want to bring to the table that hopefully that it will develop. But uh, we won't know because this is a short deal. We have to have, to have it ready to turn in tomorrow. Uh, other than that, uh, any council people have anything they want to bring up? Okay, uh, I think we have some comments out of the audience. Uh, does anybody in the audience want to say, okay, Mr. K, I'm a, I got a bell on you up here now. Okay, I want to apologize for the cap. I with polio, I can't pull my left eye, so this light hurts my eyes, so I have to wear a cap to see me. Uh, but I want to report on what's happened on the Main Street, uh, on the North Vine. And, uh, and since this been turned into two, two lane street, uh, we've, uh, we've lost a cafe out there. And uh, one of the employees told me that they, when they went into a two lane street, they might have lost a lot of business. So they looked for a place to go. They moved down to the junction at the truck stop. That uh, city lost sales tax and uh, lost the income off of, uh, of this business. Two other businesses have closed since then and have moved to another part of the city. And both of them told me it was caused of the two lane street, that they had lost business. And, uh, and I own one building on there on this, uh, on this two lane street and I had to, I lowered the rent to this man so he could stay in there. So uh, uh, the people that, uh, that they're still in two other businesses now that have told me that if they hadn't owned their own property, they would be looking to be moved. So uh, if uh, uh, the people that's trying out there, aren't in businesses trying to make a living on it, trying to make a living, are, are having a problem. And, uh, so I just want to let you know what's happening on the, on North Main, and uh, uh, is it? Uh, I haven't talked to anyone that is for it. Uh, I was uh, I got a, 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 in a situation out there here. Well, it's been se several months ago. I was in one lane going north, but someone was trying to turn in, or you know, but the lane was blocked. The left lane was coming in and it was blocked. About that time I heard the siren of the ambulance. <coughs> they had no place to go. <coughs> the people in these single lanes could go, they couldn't get out of the way. So it's, and then now the ambulance are moving out there on the curb where the old motel was. And that's going to be a, a, another suicide situation. With a four lane, well, when people have them going on, people have a, have a lane to, to move to. But now, when you're, if it was just a two lane, you have no, no way to go. And uh, so, that's, uh, that's, that, that's the situation I was in. So, that's, that's, uh, that's, where, that's where Main Street is right now. So, if, uh, and uh, I have to talk to a business that's on Main Street. That has that has telling that it, it, it has helped them. Uh, it, 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 they, it, they haven't been. I haven't talked to any of this been for. So uh, it's a it's a sad situation. Uh, it, it looks like to me it's killing Main Street as far as the business commercial business area. So I just want to report to you that. Thank okay. you. I've, uh, I've talked to almost all of the businesses on both sides of the road. I'd say 90% of them. There's not one of them that's for it. That's for them. 
Were the two lane? No. There's not a one that was part of the road path that was the floor line. And I'm going to bring it back up next month. Well, I guess I'm going to let you know what happened to it. Oh, uh, in another situation, one of the businesses that's out there now contacted me about a location. And I showed them some what possibilities, what the location, because I own some land around there in the town and some in town. And uh, so there, uh, there's some unhappy people out there on Main Street. Well, uh, that's where we're getting a, uh, a lot of our tax dollars. A lot of it. Tax dollars. So I just I just want to report to you where what the situation is and it's uh, it won't it won't get better and it won't take half itself. Uh, I use the street quite often I, because I do business with some of the people out there. I go to the tire shop, I go to the battery shop, I do uh, with the uh, uh, carpet place. I uh, use that in some rentals and uh, so I, I do get a quite a bit of business. But now the other two people that did move out, they went, they moved to other parts of town and they, their excuse was that it was a two-lane road that was hurting their business. And so uh, uh, that's pretty nice to live. My wife's calling me. Okay, thank you. So thank you. You better Thanks, have you. Don't spain will have you. <laughs> okay, anybody else on this? Thanks for saying that. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, stay here. Second.